What's up guys, back with another Twin Motion tutorial. I'm going to show you how I created this exterior rendering using Twin Motion. Let's get right to the video. Alright, so let's kind of look around and see what we're working with. So as you can see, we have a exterior mixed use three level building and we have some cars and just to kind of give you a little bit of an overview on what assets I use so these cars a lot of the, these cars come from sketchfab where you can kind of go in a search and you can put in car and you get different options here and a lot of these other cars came from twin motion so just to kind of not bog down my computer I actually use some high-end vehicles from Sketchfab and I also use some for Twin Motion. So you can go to vehicles here and go to cars and you can use these. So I use some of those throughout my design just to kind of give it a little bit of a variety. And for my vegetation, I use Max Tree. So that's really good if you want to bring out some of the realism in your landscaping. And we also have some lighting going on as well. So I may do another tutorial on how I did the lighting, but I may do that in my nighttime rendering. So stick around for that one. All right, so all the rest of these guys come from um, Sketchfab as well and a lot of the material came from mega scans so all right now first thing we want to do is we're going to set up our scene and we're going to find a view that works perfect for us i've already created my view i already named my rendering i call it day rendering and as you can see i already set up my view but we're gonna actually make some adjustments to make this rendering look better and we're going to use the path tracer so stick around and don't forget to hit that like button for me don't forget to hit the notification bell all right so right now i've already selected my view and as you can see my lights are already on we have a sky we have our trees in the background so everything is looking okay but as you can see it does not give you that realistic look that we're looking for so those are some of the steps that I'm going to um, help you out with all right so first thing you want to do is create your image you go to the plus sign add image and you can name your rendering by going to the media menu and we can go to rename I call mine day render because this is gonna be a day render scene all right so now that we have all that now we're gonna go into our um, our properties panel. All right, so we have our environment tab here, and you notice I have HDRI. So I'm not going to use HDRI. I'm actually going to use the dynamic sky. So we're going to click on dynamic sky, and we're going to start making uh, some adjustments to our settings here. So our time of day is at 10:30 a.m. I actually want to change that to um, a later time. Let's do, let's do like 6.30. Let's do 6.30 p.m. All right, let's see if we can. All right, so we're doing a later time, 6.30 p.m. And now we have our north offset and we got it at zero degrees. I actually want to do, we're going to do 360. All right, so as you can tell, our rendering is looking very, <laughs> very, look very washed right now. So let's, let's go ahead and go to render. We got our path tracer on. 
already have mine set to 20, 40, 80. Let's set it down some just so we can kind of start seeing some results here. Okay. We have our intensity lux at 100,000. I'm going to crank that down all the way to 100. My temperature is set at 6,800. We're gonna do 5,600, okay? And as I go along, you're gonna start seeing why I'm making these adjustments and the reasoning behind them because you start to see when I adjust the appearance, the intensity, the temperature, you start to see the day rendering start to take shape. And that's that's exactly what we're trying to do here. So we're gonna scroll down. Okay, we'll keep our size. Well, no, let's actually change our size of our size of our sun here. Right now we have a 0 0.52. I want to make it 8.84. And the reason why I make my sun size a lot bigger because I want it to be closer to kind of bring more more light to our building here, to our scene. So we're in the month right now we have it in June I want to change that to the month that we're in right now and we're actually in May so we'll slide it down some all right so we're gonna make some adjustments to our sky right now we have turbidity at 0, 0.0 let's make that 0 0.3 and that's just gonna change the sky uh, turbidity from like clear to hazy um, and it and it tells you higher level simulate um, occluded lighting due to pollution dust and aerosols so let's do 0 0.3 see what kind of and a lot of times when I'm playing around with these settings it, it kind of gives you it gives you the idea of what settings to mess around with just to kind of see what works and what doesn't work. And sometimes you have to play around with these settings to even understand what's happening. So right now we have at atmosphere density and it's at 0 0.0. I'm gonna change that to 3.0. Okay. So before I go on with my environment settings, let's go ahead and look at our camera real quick. I definitely want to adjust my camera settings here. Guys, if you're liking this video, don't forget to smash that like button for me and hit the notification bell. All right, so right now in our camera, I want to change, I want to use my focal length and I just want to zoom in here for a second. I'm gonna do 31. There you go. So now we're closer up. All right. So let's scroll down. Let's pick up where we left off. Okay, so details. We have ambient is at one. I wanna change that to two. And we'll leave moon intensity at 1.50. Okay, for our clouds, I actually try to play around with the volumetric clouds and I had I had a fun time really just playing around with it and ultimately I end up just ending up with a white sky but that's okay so I'll just kind of show you what I did so as you can see my clouds are showing 
but but i thought at the end of the day the results that i came up with i messed around with some of the appearance here the scale and i end up just going with a kind of a clear sky and i thought that looked better with the scene but you can definitely play around with the volumetric uh, clouds it definitely uh, brings more realism to your scenes so test that out we're not gonna go over that today i don't want to um, make a long drawn out video but just kind of showing you some of the things that i did do to get the results that i did so play around with some of the scale, the vertical extent, the flat bottom, the puffiness, and you can kind of start to see the um, clouds take shape, or if you just want to white out the scene, you can do that as well. So my computer is saving. All right, so let's continue. All right, so also, I did go and change the season right now it looks dry so I did crank it up and I wanted to show I wanted to show uh, some puddles I wanted to show like it's been raining but the Sun came out eventually and as you can see you start to see how it really started to look more realistic as I changed the season in my scene and it's giving a really good um, it's giving a really good look if you ask me it's starting to take shape so let's see what else we can do go to details So I don't have anything in details. All right, now let's go to our camera and see what adjustments we're gonna make here. We already made a couple adjustments. Let's see, I want to I keep my exposure. It's, it's at one, it's kind of really bright to me, starting to look a little whitewash, so. Let's see if we can change our exposure to 0 0.25. And that kind of, that darkened our scene a little bit, which you can see a lot better, which looks good to me. All right, so now let's scroll down. Check our details. Now let's look in our vignetting. Right now we have 50%. I believe um, I want to bring that down some. Let's do 25%. So vignetting just darkens our corners. And when you're using vignetting, it actually darkens your corners so you can kind of hone in on the actual image, which I don't need to darken the corners that much for this particular scene. And our sharpness is way too high. I'm gonna do 25% for this scene. All right. So here we're gonna use parallelism. We're gonna click on parallelism. All right. Okay, so starting to look really good. I'm still going to make a few adjustments. So guys, don't forget to smash that like button for me. Hit the notification bell. If you got any questions, don't be afraid to leave a comment down below. All right, so now on our FX here, just add some final touches. We have our contrast at 50%. And I'm thinking let's lower that to 48%. And our saturation, let's give it, hmm. For our saturation, I don't want it to be too saturated because then your scene 
starts to give off this artificial look. So we're gonna do, let's do 38%. All right, so here we also can add a color gradient and I did add a color gradient to this scene and I believe I use South. So you can use different options here. I use the South just because I like the way it gave um, a certain look to my scene. And let's see if we can find it. Okay. All right, so as you see, I, I clicked on um, the fill color gradient south and it gave some nice tones um, to my 3D scene, which I really like this image. I really like how it came out as well. I didn't use a filter for this one. I'll go to image. I also did make it a 4K and just to kind of give it a higher resolution. And also my original samples per pixel that I used was 2048. All right, so guys, I think that this image came out pretty well. Don't forget to smash that like button for me, hit the notification bell, and we'll be back with another one.